Hello, I'm Alone in Finland, this is Eva Online, and I thought we would have a little conversation about the anatomy of a gate camp. This is mainly aimed at new players in general, uh, because I saw some discussions in general going through the forums and going through Reddit, uh, where not everybody sort of was aligned on the reasons for this. And obviously there's going to be different viewpoints, different opinions, and a lot of them can be equally valid, but in one or two cases there was people that didn't understand the advantages or dangers of things like this. Uh, there was a few people, and I'm assuming that they were joking, that was trying to tell new players, oh no, you just go through high sec and you autopilot and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, obviously, anybody who's played for any length of time knows that going through high sec in Udema um, is, well, death. Um, you might get through it once or twice, but the time that you try it with a lot in, you're gonna lose your stuff. So I thought I'd go through this as a little bit of an explanation in general. Um, so first and foremost, why would you want to do it? Now this is a, an autopilot route. Um, going through, obviously this is uh, Eve Maps, Eve Maps on .land.net, so evemaps.land.net. If you're going to do any navigation, um, this has everything you need to work out where you are, work out what's around about you and what's the best routes to do this. Um, and it also links into some of the places that show you kills and stuff like that in general. Um, so it's a fantastic system to be able to use and uh, it's completely free with actually minimal adverts like, like one there but you can throw it out of the way so it's really good uh, now on this particular map around about here hidden in the back you can see the hex system um, this is another version of the map in general so you can get these up and it will show you the individual um, what do you call them the individual areas um, so metropolis for the I cannot find that name in my head, um, but what we're looking at at the moment is this bigger one. So going from heck, if you're here where my cursor is, if I just good, show you right there. If you want to go from heck up to Jita, the high sec route goes through bay and then all this way around. However, the low sec route, if you have a look here, the low sec route goes from heck up to Altu, which is here. And then from Altu it goes to Thelan, Merotem, Ransa, Sierra Lake, and then you're back into high sec. So you have four low sec jumps as opposed to the 20 something jumps to go around um, the high sec route. So it's, I believe it's eight jumps in total. So that's the reason there's less time. And I'll throw this up at the moment in the background just so you can see. Um, but I recently did this just to time it. And if you're in an industrial, you without any sort of alignment mods you can essentially expect about a 25 minutes so anywhere between 22 minutes and 30 minutes to be able to transit heck up to jita um, whereas if you are taking an industrial through low sec providing you survive it uh, you're looking at about six to seven minutes for the exact same trip so you can be cutting down um, sort of 80% off of your travel time if you're going the direct low set route as opposed to going through the high set route and that's kind of why the map is sort of built this way in general um, so that there is a reason to be in low set um, um, and there's a reason to transit because you can save a bit of time now with that being said and that being the reasoning for using it how safe is high set well if you look at the actual um, the amount of kills that you get um, and again, to be able to do that, this is Zed Killboard, so this is a fantastic website that will give you all of the information and um, roughly, like, roughly, sort of, you can have a look at who's dying, when they're dying, and stuff like this if you have a little bit of a search around. But this is the Udema system, and this is for today, um, at the time of recording, it's 3 o'clock, and you can see how many kills have already happened today on the 10th. So when was the 10th? The 10th was a Saturday and it was fantastically quiet in Odema and that doesn't make sense to me, but maybe something was going on. Uh, but if you go back in general, you will see that Odema is a particularly dangerous system where you are losing sort of miners and um, ships in general. And I've shown before that freighters come through this all the time and get popped uh, because it's kind of hacker, uh, not hacker central, it's uh, ganker central. Um, and within sort of two systems of a demo um, so going down to Savala and I can't remember what the next one up in the line is 
um, but around about here is where you get the the majority because this is where a lot of the um, I'll bring that up so around about this section is where a lot of the transport routes uh, combine so if you're coming from Galante um, if you're coming from Matari or you're coming from um, Amor space usually you're transiting this particular area which is why it's so dangerous um, there are things to make it a little bit safer um, for instance the the trick where you're throwing yourself into uh, warp um, as you can see in front of you I'll put this up just now so you align you activate your cloak and your warp drive at the same time then once you're up to speed you turn off the cloak um, at the same time as the the micro warp drive turns off um, and you immediately spam warp and you should get into to warp within a couple of seconds depending on skills um, which is a good way of being able to sort of avoid somebody's lock and get out before somebody can get close to you and bump you um, and this is a way that I regularly transit obviously as you might have noticed in the, the video I put up before um, that's not something that I always do going through and one of the other things that I will do to avoid this is when I'm fitting up a ship, I make sure that my ship doesn't have high quality modules on it. Um, because sometimes they'll scan your cargo, but some of the scanners will scar scan cargo and modules. So if you have an empty ship, but it has shiny modules, they might still take you out. Um, so it's a little bit better to lower the risk in being popped in general, um, because the amount of benefit you'll get when your cargo is full uh, with the shiny modules sort of is offset by the fact that somebody might decide to pop you when you're empty and you're not really paying attention to what you're doing um, so that's some of the problems that you can get with high sec that being said let's go through the sort of anatomy of a gate camp in low sec now for low sec gate camps come into two different varieties um, and the first one the long distance one also shows up in high sec and it shows up there's several of them running on jita's main station at the same time um, and they usually revolve around the same ship that would be a tornado so you can see here we have this little gentleman if i just hit look at we have this gentleman and his tornado which is sat right off of the gate and i'm not exactly sure of his distance but if i'm out So that's 200 kilometers so he's about 50 off of the gate uh, which means that to the opposite side of the gate he's still within good impact range for shorter range ammo if he is using um, short range ammo on his guns so the tornado is a ship that can use battle size battleship size guns um, and it, they usually fit them up which i can't actually see the his guns there they're not showing for me um, but they usually fit them up with artillery which has a very high impact value. My own tornado, which I have used for doing this kind of attack, um, can kick out 4, 14,000 damage in one hit. So any frigate is popped. Um, most cruisers, if they're unarmored or if their tank isn't active, um, are popped in the single hit. You can take out a lot of ships just by getting a lock on them and getting a shot off. Um, so that's one of the types of... of killing in general but it's the type of gate camp because you might have one tornado or you might have 10 tornadoes and all they're doing is waiting for something to decloak that's slow enough they can get a lock on um, as you can see here your man's actually broadcasting sensor um, over here so they might be running sensors backwards and forwards um, which will allow them to have a little bit of a faster lock time um, but that's the entire game for this particular ship is to get something locked and get a shot off because most ships can be killed in one hit so that's your long range um, gate camp. Oh, your man's warping. But then we get into the actual nitty gritty, the main gate camp. So that's the short range one. And you can see here, we have the short range one going on. So the short range is sort of um, split up into a couple of different parts. Not all of the parts will be active, but these are the main parts that you will have through everything. And as you can see here, we have just got a coveter jumping in. That has been popped before I could look at the thing. Um, so that's the that's how fast it can happen. Um, but the short range gate cab works in this sort of method. So the first part of it 
would be your lookouts. So in this system at the moment, we have 36 people, 25 of them are aligned to the corporation that are on this gate. Um, there's a few different corporations here, but they all work together for the pirate factions. Um, and then there is a couple of people who are independent. Um, before, when it was 30 people in system, there was uh, four independents. Those independents are sort of newer characters, uh, but not brand new because they are usually hovering somewhere around the gates to see what's coming in, what's coming out, so they're working as lookouts. Um, on top of that, in the next system there will be a, a lookout, so here we're on the Rancer gate, uh, so in Rancer there will be a lookout, um, and also, what's the next system down? In all two, there will be a lookout for what's coming through, so these guys will have intel before it lands in the system what is transiting. Um, and that's a way that they'll sort of see exactly what's going on um, because they'll have the lookouts. After that, you have the tackle. Now, we'll get to what's just happened in a second, but the tackle would be, for instance, this broadsword is a perfect example. Tackle can take various varieties, but the broadsword and any other heavy introduction cruiser are the best way of doing it because they, instead of having a warp disruptor or a warp scrambler, they use a warp disruption field generator. It doesn't matter how stable your warp core is, if you've got a warp core stab on, if you've got bonuses to stability, that does not matter if you have this particular uh, module fitted, they lock down everything. So if he gets a lock on you, you're not going anywhere. Um, on top of that, they can, I uh, can't remember what the module is, but once this is active, they can't really move. I'm not sure if they can, Let's have a look at it. I'm not sure if they can... Um, da, 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 let's have a look here. I'm having a look because my knowledge of this is sort of a little bit older and sometimes things change and I want to make sure I get everything active. So they cycle every 30 seconds and it disallows assistance. So he can't take remote reps. He's got 30 seconds to hold you there. Um, and while he's holding you there, he can't receive any help. So there's a possibility to attack him in that time and for him not to be able to receive remote reps, but it's only 30 seconds and in that time um, you're either going to die or if you can survive it, he is going to be able to tank the damage for that amount of time. As you can see here, we have a lot of different ships kicking about at this particular gate. Um, so it's all his job is is to hold somebody there until somebody else can get a warp disruptor or a warp scrambler onto you and then it's game over with the amount of people that are running this gate camp so after the tackle uh, one of the things oh uh, let me say that again one of the things that helps with the tackle is sensor linking so as you can see here we have some ships that are sort of um that's not a great example um but we have some ships that will be broadcasting sensor, armor, uh, etc. There's a sensor linking one, I believe. Um, so this will up the, the sensor power, which means that the amount of time to lock um, is sort of decreased in general. Um, so he will have a very fast lock time because he's getting help with his sensors, um, which means that he's essentially got less than a second to lock you. Doesn't matter what you are, he will get the lock on. Um, which means that your ability to warp has to be within one second, which is one tick of the server. That's an important thing to know because um, if you can't do it that fast, you're not getting away from this type of camp. Not all camps are like this. This is a more severe one because this is all of these guys do. Um, they are here constantly. And, oh, the alarm's gone off. Um, these guys are here constantly and this is all they do for the most part. Um, there is two or three corps here that live here. And they don't leave system, they don't do much else. I know somebody in one of the corps and I was chatting to them and they were like, no, why would we do anything else? And I was like, because it's a game, you're just basically the same thing every day, day in and day out for decades, I don't understand. But that's how they get their jollies, that's what they want to do. Um, Eve is something for everybody. So these guys are very good at what they do. It's not complicated. It's not, I'd say it's not really PVP in my opinion, because it is so simple. It is attacking another player. So it technically is, but there's no finesse or knowledge to it. It is 
a nice simple thing that anybody can actually do um, and because they've got their station here they're nice and safe so the only people that can really sort of fight them or take them out are bigger corporations that want to put a, th a fair bit of resources into it um, but it's easy for these guys to rebuild so this is sort of where they are how they are now after you've got that sensor um, that scrambler that um, tackler then you'll have your main DPS. Now in some cases, like the broadsword, that can provide damage. Um, but as you can see here, out of the ships they've got, they've got a Legion, a Brutix, kicking about locally, um, Rodavida, Ashmu, and things like that. So a lot of these ships are your damage, and because you've got so many of them, that's where your main damage comes from. That's the second sort of layer. You tackle them, you damage them. Uh, nice and simple. And then on top of that, you can have things like, for instance, this Ashimu provides capacitor warfare, so it can if they get a bigger target coming through, um, then they'll be able to get his try and get his tank down before he can get back to the gate and re-approach, web people down so that they can't move that fast and essentially more ways to tackle them and hold them in place or defeat their tank and get their tank sort of done. Um, after that, and we have a few examples of it, we have remote repair. So if they have to provide a longer fight, um, any fight, as you can see here, we have a little fight going on. Uh, somebody else has come through in an industrial um, and he's gone already uh, but if every time they attack they are going to get aggressed by the gate gun so everybody who attacked that ship in Lozek is going to be aggressed by the gate guns um, and in some cases as you can see here they'll warp back to the station they'll wait for that timer to go and then they'll come back out but if it's a longer one, then they'll use the remote repair, not just to fight off the attack, but also to help fight against the gate guns because they're using ships that are smaller that can handle the gate guns. Uh, they can't handle the gate guns. So the remote rep repair will stay there um, just to sort of keep them, uh, to keep them alive. But also it means that if they're here, having warped away and something juicy comes through the gate before the gate timers ended they can come back in and the remote repair can help them um, so that they have the ability to to um, tank that while this other thing has come in so that's another way another layer to this um, the remote repair is is nice and solid um, now after that you have supplies so the supply situation for these guys is they have a station and everything is there that's nice and simple if it's in null sec then there might be a gate camp where they have to switch out people which means that somebody attacking that gate camp their logistics isn't next to them in a station um, which means that when you destroy somebody he would have to warp back in in a new ship from somewhere else low sec almost every gate camp has a station next to it because that's what these guys do um, so if you kill somebody the second that you've killed someone he can be reshipping and be back there within 30 seconds because of how close the ship is um, so that's a situation that doesn't often happen in null sec it does in, in occasional border systems and things like that um, but in general it's not something that you think about for the null sec people that does happen in low sec is that that recycle time can be very fast um, on top of that if you bring something heavy enough to take out all of these guys they could have something heavier in the station so if you pop a couple of people the next thing that could come out uh, could even be up to a capital that's rigged for attacking battleships or something like that so there's they have sort of unknown escalation ability which is why it's such a dangerous thing uh, now with all that being said that's all of the downsides let's talk about the method of penetration how do you get through a gate camp like this nice and simple uh, it comes into uh, sort of four main methods the first one being avoidance don't go anywhere near it and you don't have to deal with it um, that obviously links into how safe it is to transit in other places and keeping an eye going through high sec how much value you've got what you're transiting in um, but in general avoidance is the best method um, the method after that if you're talking about um, actually getting through it then the first one is a line speed the second is cloak and the third one is bait now let's go through bait first actually because it's the least effective method but it works against very small gate camps um, i run this regularly on a couple of people who run a gate camp in a different area um, i have to go into this area if i'm 
uh, missioning. There's a particular system that I keep getting burner missions in. So I want to take in a little frigate. Um, and my frigate is a couple of hundred million. But it cannot survive a gate camp. So what I do every time I do this is I bring my alt online. I put them in a venture. Um, and I don't fit any modules. I'm just throwing away a venture. And what I do is I head towards the system with the two characters, one hanging about a system behind. Um, and then at the last section is we're crossing into low sec where the gate camp is. I send the alt in. And as I jump with the alt into the gate camp system, I jump my main in behind it into the, the system that the alt was leaving from and warp towards the gate. I then hold the cloak on the alt so that the alt is sitting there where I can see the gate camp. If there isn't one, then that's fine. Um, and as I'm getting towards the gate, just before I load the grid, um, or before I get within 14 AU so that the directional scanner can be seen, that's when I decloak. Um, so I decloak the alt and I approach the gate, uh, which means that those guys immediately lock up the alt and they start shooting. At which point I will land on the gate with the main character, I will jump through to that system and immediately jump past the gate camp because they're focused on the other ship. And there's two reasons that this works. Number one, they're focused on the ship they're attacking. Number two, it's because their modules are in partial cycle. So they have um, run a module and as the cycle is running round the module, um, they can't immediately turn it off and relock me and get that module back on so I can get past them. And I run this in different characters. Uh, obviously, they'll flag a character if it happens too often. Um, but it's a way that I get through them on a regular basis. And these guys know me. They hate me for it, but they're very friendly and chatty and stuff like this. It just winds them up every time they see my ship zipping past because they know that they've taken the bait yet again. Um, but they also have a lot of people going through that system that do go through adventures. So they're going to take every kill that they can because that's how uh, gate campers get their jollies. So that's the avoid. That's the, the, the bait and jump method. Now, the second method is a line speed. This is sort of the worst method, especially if you're coming up with a, coming up against a camp like this. As you can see here, with, uh, with sensor linking in general, these guys have a, a sensor locking time that is down around about a second. Now, one second is the magic number in EVE because that is one tick of the server. Everything that happens within one second happens at the same time. So that uh, when they, when you need to align and jump, you need to get decloaked and into warp within one second, or their click to lock you will happen if their their um, their locking time is fast enough. Um, and what they will actually do is they will preload their modules. So they will click all the modules to active. So their their gun, their scrambler, etc. Everything will be active, so all they need to do is get the lock. The second the lock happens, all of those modules activate. So you need a sub one second lock time. Now, uh, shuttles have a sub one second lock time, and some ships can be uh, rigged for this, and you have a chance of getting through. But in general, you're going to get locked, which means that if you're using something like heavy interdiction cruiser, the second that lock lands, you are not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how stable your core is. Um, so then they've got you. So that's a method of doing it that will get you through some, but if you're coming through this particular system, which is Merotem, um, these guys, their gate camp is usually sort of set up for that. This is all these guys do. And the majority of gate camps in low sec, that is all those players do for those gate camps. They sit in the same place, they do the same thing, they are well practiced at it. They have got it down to... I won't say a fine art because it doesn't take much to get good at this, um, but they are sort of experts in their own right as it. Um, they're not really PvP fighters, they don't really know how to set up things, they are just using numbers and a specific repeatable skill. Um, like somebody who is a, a high quality expert at throwing out burgers in a, a fast food store. Um, they're very good at what they do because it's not a difficult thing, so it's not difficult to get good. Still doesn't make them a Michelin chef at, um, at um, PvP, but this is what they do well because it's not difficult. So, with that being said, the best method to get through these. The best method is your cloak. As you can see here, I've been orbiting these guys for a while. 
Um, and the whole point of the cloak, and I've mentioned this in the previous video, is that when you jump in, because of that uh, server tick time, what you can do is you can hit jump or warp to the next gate or whichever area you're going to, and you immediately hit the cloak at the same time. So what actually happens is your, uh, your client on your computer registers the warp command, the decloak, and then the cloak at the same time. Um, and it means that it's an impossibility for them to lock you because the server will register your cloaking before they see you um, uh, they see you and can lock you because of pings and transit times. Obviously, as I mentioned in the previous video to do with the, the actual saving of your pod, um, if you're in a situation where you're, say for instance, in Australia and the people are in Britain, um, they will be able to get that um, that lock on before you will be able to get your cloak signal activated um, because of the way that the mechanics work between the servers so if you have a low latency ping not even this could save you um, and again if you're in say for instance you are playing on a computer that's just downloading something and your ping is very slow because of packet losses and things like that this might also affect it um, so it's not something that is uh, that's a, like a god mode ability to do it it won't work every single time um, but it's your safest option you can come in you can warp you can lock um, for me i know that i have a fast connection and i know um, that i'm fairly close to britain so in general um, i have this ability and it's very difficult for them to get a lock on me that being said if i'm not using a cloak i'm dead um, so that's your safest sort of method, which means that training a, a cloak up, specifically a covert ops cloak, on a platform for a covert ops cloak. Um, so that would be your Stratios, um, covert ops ships, bomber ships, or blockade runner cargo ships. Um, this is your safest safest way to transit. Also, they have their trade offs because a blockade runner doesn't have the cargo capacity of normal haulers; it has a slightly lower capacity. Um, and you also want to make sure that your align time and things like that are lower because one of the methods that these guys will do is if you hit warp and cloak they might have a fast little frigate and you can see that these guys have two of them there a dramiel and a jaguar um, when you decloak they will immediately head towards you as fast as they can um, so that while you have recloaked and you are warping they will get to the position that you are at obviously because you're within 16 kilometers uh, dramiel is particularly good at this so if they pass within two and a half kilometers from your um, your position, you will get decloaked and they might be able to get a scramble on then. Right, just while I'm editing this video, I wanted to make sure that I explain a few things. Somebody trying to pop me already. Um, so the cloak method, if you are using something that doesn't have a covert ops cloak, so this has an improved cloaking device on it. Um, you can sort of see the fit there. So this particular ship, the way that you're going to do it for cloaking, if you're going to head, let's for instance say head up to this, you're going to align to the point you're warping to, you're going to hit your cloak and your micro warp drive at the same time, you're going to right click on your object, I'm not warping directly to it, but then you're going to decloak as the micro warp drive turns off and at the exact same time you're going to hit warp and that's where the micro warp drive has accelerated you up to the warp threshold which is three quarters of your speed um, when once your micro warp drive is off so as you start decelerating you're going fast enough to get into warp not all ships um, have that sort of threshold so make sure you check what you're doing before you go anywhere um, but that's the cloak trick when you're using something that doesn't have a covert ops cloak um, it's the align um, cloak and micro warp drive Ooh, some battle ships um, and then we'll do it and repeat again so I'm hitting a line I'm cloaking I'm hitting micro warp I'm then right clicking you can sort of see just off the screen and as the micro warp drive cancels I'm canceling the cloak and hitting warp and then we're straight back into warp and the good thing is also to pulse your hardeners um, just in general but it is what it is um, so this is one of the ways you can do that but as you can see that takes a fair few seconds um, 
So for me, that's 15 seconds in this particular ship. Um, a lot of my Tech 1 industrials are sort of rigged for about 10 seconds. Um, but I wanted to show that first before we lead into the next part because what I was saying about them having someone to come and decloak you. So as you jump into system, a person will immediately move towards you if you cloak and try and decloak you. They have to get within two and a half kilometers, but usually they will have their camera zoomed all the way out. So all they have to do is put a direction between the center of the screen and where you were and double click to accelerate and then go for it. Now, to show velocities of this, I have a specific ship that I used to use for this. So I want to show that next. So for me, this is a claw interceptor. Um, and if I do it the same again and head to my undock point, we'll just head out there and what they'll actually do when they're doing this is they'll sit on gate they will preload their overload and then when you come in they'll sort of swing their camera to where they need to they'll double click and hit the micro warp drive and as you can see from my speed here i will get up to 4000 in no time so i have moved a phenomenal amount in a short amount of time um, with my speed this isn't cap stable but obviously I can move hundreds and hundreds of kilometers um, in no time at all as the, the cap sort of wears out um, so that's the way that it's sort of done if I just warp to zero so I've got a good measurement on this and you can see with that acceleration with that top speed even though it's not cap stable this this has one job to do um, which is decloaking a cloaky that's coming through a gate. So if we look, where's my bookmark? There's my bookmark. We are 2.5k off of it. So if I just double click and hit go. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And within 10 seconds we are 50 kilometers away. So easy to get to the 16 kilometers in about 5 seconds. Um, and you'll have them decloaked in no time. So that method also is sort of reliant on what's on the other side of it. There are still ways to be decloaked and to be locked up. So something to bear in mind. Um, the last one after that, obviously, I was as I was explaining it, I was sort of more gearing towards the uh, covert ops cloak. So this is a blockade runner, and you can see if I'm warping out of here and just hitting straight warp two, then the second I've cleared, oh, I managed to bounce off a freighter. The second that I have cleared the thing, I can get my, my cloak in. Um, but what I'm going to do just to show you is to jump through somebody else's gate. Let's just... Oh, did that wrong. There we go. We're heading through a gate now. So, with this method, as you're going through the gate, you're going to hit warp and cloak. And you want to make sure that they are sort of less than half a second apart, but not simultaneously. And I'll show you why. Um, the main reason is that if you hit warp and cloak at the same time, it won't allow your cloak to activate. Whereas if your computer's had the chance to process the warp, uh, it will then allow the cloak to kick in. So let's do this just first with showing you the warp and cloak at the exact same time. So this won't work. Um, so if I... Just so you can see, I'll find a place in space. So... One, three, two, one, warp and cloak. And it says interference from the cloak you're doing is preventing your systems from functioning. So the gate cloak is disallowing the, the actual cloak. So that will cause you an issue. You need to make sure that your computer has registered um, that you are uh, moving, that the cloak has been, the gate cloak has stopped before the next one comes in. Um, spamming the button doesn't work because if you're spamming the button then you might activate the cloak and then deactivate it which obviously means that it's it's worthless um so this is where you need to get your timing correct for this thing and i would recommend practicing it before you you get it so this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to take any random point in space now we've got some criminals coming in so let's just go to the sun at this time I'm going to hit warp and then a, a split second after I'm going to hit cloak. So I hit warp and then cloak. There you saw we got the same warning because I was too soon. But I managed to get the cloak in. So that is where you need to get your timing right. Um, and 
it's also where that danger element comes in because there is a chance that you uh, you are too slow when you activate your cloak and they might get lock on there. Uh, for me, I've never had somebody be able to catch me um, when I was doing it this way. Uh, the only times I've ever sort of lost one is when I wasn't paying attention. My, my attention is going somewhere else or something like this, which does happen. Um, but the reason that this particular ship is is particularly good at it is because you have a, a reactivation delay on your covert ops cloak that has been dropped low. Um, so you do have the ability to cloak and then when you decloak, as you're going through the gate, it will be quite a, a, quite a fast reset as you travel the gate for the cloak to reset and you can initiate it again. So it's a very good thing for transit in low sec. Um, I actually prefer taking blockade runners through low sec as opposed to any other ship um, in general because of that. Um, so if I'm exploding, I'm usually taking a blockade runner instead of something else, which is just weird to a lot of people, but I'm not really combat focused for a lot of the stuff that I do. So I hope that helps with the stuff and back to it. Um, so that's the other ways that they can beat this, but it's one of the ways to get through it. As you can see here, these guys are kicking out all sorts of stuff. I imagine that they're waiting for something quite severe to come through, the fact that they've brought out their shiny battleships. But this is a, another method that you can use to sort of get through um, to make it a bit safer. Um, and then finally, times. Um, these gentlemen that are on playing, possibly women, possibly lads, I'm assuming lads because of the behaviour, uh, but uh, these people that are playing here, they are always active in the weekends. So Friday, sort of after um, after downtime, you will get people on here in this particular system. This gate camp will start running and it will be almost constant. Um, I ran this just before downtime, I ran it after downtime, I've run it at every time of the day and there is always somebody here. But over the weekends, this is stacked at least 10 deep. And obviously I can see from local how many of them are attached to the same corpse and they, there's at least 30 in system. It doesn't really matter how many are alts because all damage can be applied. But that's why this can be so dangerous. So that's sort of the best information I can put out there for that. Um, but yeah, with that being said, if you've got any other tips and tricks... Oh, I just forgot one that I've... Uh, one myself that isn't relevant here but that is relevant in Nullsec so the last thing for Nullsec for avoidance is if we just bring up our market no nope, not that one this one we have interdiction if I can spell correctly interdiction nullifiers so if you're in Nullsec, you might come across bubbles. Um, the, doo -doo -doo, the heavy interdiction cruisers, the main module that they use, although it's targeted, that's a script that modifies it. Normally they produce a bubble. You also have um, ships like the Sabre that have um, interdiction bubble launchers, so they can fly around the place dropping bubbles, but there are also anchorable structures. So if you come through 0-0, zero, zero, um, you're in null sec space, you could come across a, a bubble. So you warp in, or you jump into a system and then all of a sudden that bubble is there um, and you can't get out of it. You can't warp without getting to the edge of it. Um, an introduction nullifier is a module that you would activate before you drop your cloak, which would allow you to warp. So once you've activated that, you then uh, need to follow previously mentioned procedures. So you activate it, which removes the ability of the interdiction bubble. Uh, then you need to get your align, your warp and all of that jazz off as quick as possible um, to get away from it. Sometimes you will come through um, a system where what they'll do is they'll stack two gate camps, um, one after the other on the route. And these particular things have a reset time. Let me just check this one. Uh, so this has a reactivation delay of 150 seconds, so two and a half minutes. Um, well, let me check the other one because I don't actually know this one. So this has a reactivation delay of 100 seconds for the, the tech one. Um, so within 100 seconds you can't pulse it again. So if you warp gate to gate and then go through the second gate before this is reset, you need to wait for this 
uh, for the reactivation delay to, to wear off before you can turn it on again, which means that in some places you might get caught in the second bubble. So if you're using one of these, it's always a good idea, instead of warping to the next gate, of warping to um, a planet or another celestial object and waiting for it to reset. Um, these also work on the inbound trick. So if you know that a gate camp is going to be at a place um, with a bubble, you click one of these, you'll be able to warp straight to the gate. Um, before you have, you need to do this before you initiate warp. If you do it mid warp, it, I don't think it works. It's never worked for me, um, but it's something to be aware of. So these are a way that you can sort of get around the bubble problems. Um, but remember that all of these are lowering risk. It doesn't make it zero risk. You can get all sorts of problems with these. Um, and if you're in null sec and one of these bubbles is active, that's also another reason why you want your sort of warp in points, as you can see here on mine. Why my warp in point isn't in line um, with the, the gate that I'd be going through. Um, because if it's in line with the bubble, the bubble can capture and drag you. So for instance, if you're warping to the gate um, and you're coming up here, sort of from directly south, directly uh, below on the screen, but they have a bubble up here that will actually drag your warp point out to it. So you will arrive off of the gate. Um, I know people that know NullSec will know this, but this is sort of aimed more at new players. Um, it's good to read in about the bubble mechanics.